Apocrypha comes from a Greek word, ap apocrypto, which means to hide what, what is hidden. And uh, the word English word apocryphal has come to mean false. So when people talk about the Apocrypha, um, as Protestants, as a Protestant evangelical, I'm talking about additional books that I don't believe are part of the canon, uh, but additional books that some Christian traditions like Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy include within their Old Testament canon. There's no debate uh, about the content of the New Testament among major uh, Christian traditions. It's, as some people have said, it's, it's amazing when you look at the diversity and geographical spread and, and there's this affirmation of the 27 book New Testament canon that we have. But depending on how you divide it up, it, because there's portions of books and so on, whether it's 12 additional books or for Eastern Orthodoxy, there's you know, even more. Uh, where did these books come from and, and why do Protestants not believe they're part of the canon? The easy explanation for this is to say, Jesus and the apostles didn't believe this was part of the canon. The Jews who wrote these books in the time between the Old and New Testament never included it in their canon. They're not in the synagogue that you go to. They're not quoted as scripture, with the, as the scripture says, as the word of God says, they're not quoted as scripture in the New Testament. And so we don't believe that those um, should be included uh, within our canon. Um, the Apocrypha also contains clear historical error, unlike the Old and New Testament scriptures. You can see a list of these errors, for example, in Paul Wagner's book, The Journey from Text to Translations. The Catholic Church, there were certain regional councils that affirmed books of the Apocrypha, but a church-wide council did not affirm the, the Apocrypha as, as scripture <clears throat> within the Catholic Church until the Council of Trent in 1546 in reaction against the Protestant Reformation. So that, that should give us pause if we don't have a church-wide council affirming those books uh, until a reaction against Protestants. Um, and having said that, I teach at a Baptist seminary, and so many times students who come from the Baptist tradition are very skeptical about the Apocrypha. They think it's almost like an evil book. Evil books, don't read it. But I think that's wrong. I mean, these are books that are written by early Jews who are seeking to live um, a life many times pleasing to God. If depend, You know, there's a diversity within it, but portions of the Apocrypha, you sound just like the Psalms, calling out to God in praise for his attributes. There's a beautiful passage in Sirach chapter 38 about physicians that don't despise the physician. Pray to God for healing, but don't be afraid to go to the physician because God's given him wisdom about the herbs of the earth and how they can heal you too. So we read this and we think this is you know, people seeking um, to live, to serve God many times. Some of the, I've always thought the book of Tobit would make an amazing Disney movie. Uh, it's not scripture, but if you read the book of Tobit, it has love, it has intrigue, and it's, it's really enjoyable to read as a, as a book, but it's not, it's not scripture. We can also, when we read the Apocrypha, it can help us understand um, what happened between the last book of the Old Testament and, and Jesus' ministry. Where did these Pharisees come from? Where, where did these Sadducees come from? That, that story is, is told, really, in, in the Apocrypha. You read First and Second Maccabees, and so it gives us helpful historical background. Within the Protestant tradition, there's, I've found that there are really two strands. There's a strand uh, that ends up in, in uh, sort of Anglicanism, the, the English church, and, and, uh, and then there's a strand that's more like uh, Baptist and Presbyterian. And I guess Lutheranism will be over here with Anglicanism. And they, they, they will use words from the Apocrypha for, for hymns and other things like that. They don't believe it's scripture. But within the Baptist and more Presbyterian tradition, it's really only looked at as valuable for historical background many times. But if you, look in, if, you, if you look in your hymnal, sometimes uh, we even sing hymns based on the Apocrypha, uh, but it usually doesn't say that in our hymnal. For example, the famous hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, which is in, in uh, the Baptist hymnal, is based on Sirach chapter 50, almost word for word. It's a beautiful hymn to God, Now Thank We All Our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom this world rejoices. Or the famous Christmas uh, carol that came upon a midnight clear is based upon a a text out of the Apocrypha. So the Apocrypha is not scripture, but it is helpful sometimes to understand the things that happen between the Testaments. And some Christian traditions 
have written hymns and other things that use some of the wording of the Apocrypha. Thanks for watching Honest Answers. Don't forget to subscribe 